Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another Bama Saltwater Fishing video. I'm out on the new to me boat. So this is a 24 foot. If you follow my Instagram on Facebook page, you have probably seen it before. I took my family fishing. My brother ended up catching a really nice redfish. We didn't bring the camera. We just wanted to go out and enjoy the Mother's Day weekend. And luckily we were able to have a fun and successful Mother's Day out on the new boat but this is it i just want to introduce it before we get it launched i don't know if i want to catch anything today i want to be optimistic but we'll do a little bit of boat intro and some fishing as well hopefully but it is a 24 foot clear water let me show you real quick there's so much space on this boat it is awesome so this is it right here 24 feet bay boat it rides so well the past three times we've been out on it, it it really impressed me. How well it jumps wake, it just skips right over it. It handles it fine. Cause Mother's Day weekend was a very busy boat day on the water. Not feeling like you're gonna fall out, get soaked by spray or just get beat to death. It was actually a very nice ride. But check it out. What a beautiful boat, I love the color. My first boat that I've owned was this color. Can't go wrong with the ice blue. I need to wax it but uh who has time for that when it's busy season but it's got a yamaha 250 four stroke on the back so it pushes it pretty dang good even loaded down with the t-top and everything that motor pushes it awesome so and i had it fully serviced it's got a jack plate trim tabs i put the exact same garmin that i had on my other boat so and by the way that scout is for sale at the time of making this video i don't know the status of it when I published this video, but at the time of making this video, the Scout is on consignment over at Harbor View Marine in Orange Beach. I hate to see it go. I've had some great experiences in that Scout skiff, and I hope I can pass it on to someone that's gonna buy it and use it just as much as I did. So, But I needed to get something bigger for the family. So like I said, it has an Atlas hydraulic jack plate so we can run in some skinnier water. Trim tabs, which are really nice, especially for a day like today. The wind is pretty strong out in the bay so we should be able to uh utilize those trim tabs and just skip right through and plow through the uh the short chop but it's an awesome boat the chines it sprays water out exactly like you need came with a 36 volt trolling motor min coated same brand i had on my other boat with the iPilot, all that remote controlled it is awesome i love that is the number one necessity. I do not like to fish without it. If you get one of these, you probably won't ever touch your anchor unless it's an emergency or at the sandbar. So it did have a power pole, but I have to troubleshoot the pump. I bought it with the power pole not working, so I did take it off. Luckily, it's on a bracket to the jack plate, so that was incredibly easy to take off. And then when I do get the motor working on that power pole, I'm gonna put it back on, and then we'll have a nice power pole Pro Series 2 on there. It's got this sweet Armstrong swim ladder absolutely love this it's a boarding ladder i use it at home a lot to get on and off the boat because i really don't like stepping on these trailer fenders it's not good for them in the long run to keep on stepping on them so but it did come with the loadmaster tandem axle trailer and this is a 2007 boat it's in really good shape i bought it with fairly low hours and i had the full service done and inspection on the motor so it's actually got 340 hours on it maybe a little bit more now that we used it used it some so low hours which you know when buying a boat and it's an older boat sometimes low hours is not a great thing so you always want to have someone more knowledgeable than you inspect it and do the service on it for you and make sure it's a good motor so that's fully serviced ready to go runs awesome let's go ahead and hop up in the boat and check it out we'll start around the transom so i'd have dual batteries which is really good for if you know you forget to crank the motor and you're offshore so anywhere and you run out of power on one battery you can switch over to the other battery i like having that peace of mind have a transom live well and these little spring latches are cool but majority of the time for shrimp i just use an angle i still have my trusty angle here it's so much easier just to put your shrimp in the boat take it out at the end of the day so and then sometimes the warmer water can kill your bait but these live wells are pretty good but like i said you'll see the angle a lot too got the yeti under the leaning post so this is my yeti 65 i've had that forever but the leaning post is my absolute favorite thing the t-top and leaning post whoever put this on i which i highly doubt it was factory because you can see where the deck screws used to be for whatever was here before whoever put this on and designed this leaning post they are awesome i don't know who the make of it is but this seat is absolutely comfortable they move forward they move back side to side 
And this is probably one of the more comfortable seats on some of the bay boats I've been on. And then you do have plenty of seating up front, a huge live well up here. So you could actually put a couple redfish and trout in there if you really wanted to, or a bunch of hardy hardtails <laughs> or LYs and have some good old bait. And then we have some giant fish boxes or storage. So this is what I'm excited about. You could put a 30 pound king mackerel in here without an issue. Like look how long this fish box is. And it's got that on both sides. This one I just use for storage. I keep all my safety gear in this hatch up front, but this is another giant hatch as well. So, but my extra safety gear comes in here. I do like this tea bag for the readily accessible life jackets. I like having that up, up top. It did come with the seat pedestal, which I like seat pedestals, but whoever owned this before me didn't really skimp on the brands. They installed some high quality stuff, excluding the seat. So it was a Bass Pro Shop seat and had to use a jack to get it out of there so corroded, which if you dealt with boat seats before, you know how that goes. So, but it's still a good seat, but I probably won't have it on there just so it opens up this deck space. We had four of us on board and not one of us really bumped each other. Didn't have an issue. Huge walk around length. The gunnels are fairly narrow. I was never a big fan of rails, except on this boat. They seem to be very practical. I like the rod holders on there. You can sit here, hold on to the rail, not feel like you're gonna fall out, and it opens up the walk around space, amazing. It had a radio in it, I took it out, kept the speakers. I'll probably end up upgrading the radio. But later on, we'll probably do a lot more in-depth review. I don't wanna bore y'all to death. Let's go ahead and get it launched and get out on the water and try to go do some fishing. Starts right up first time. This is always sketchy where they park this barge temporarily. It's not a no wake zone right here. So Sunday was especially freaky because people were flying through here and trying to come out of the ramp and you can't see. I have a full tank of gas, 100 gallon tank. So <laughs> that kind of teared me up a little bit filling it up. But luckily I bought it with some fuel in it. So that was worth its weight in gold. Hey, I just appreciate y'all for joining me. Let's go. Let's go do some riding, let's go do some fishing. Got some beautiful sport fishers here at the wharf, man. Got some Vikings, some Hatteras. There's the 92 Viking High Cotton. And you have some custom sport fishers as well. It's about time to go. Just gotta get through this no wake zone. I just spot locked the trolling motor, so we're in place. And we're gonna do one of my favorite things to do. You see me do it a lot because it's just fun and productive and that's fish a live shrimp under popping cork. And I just hook it where that horn meets the body. Just make sure not to hook any of the dark matter in its head so you don't kill it. It looks really natural and stays alive well on the hook that way. And I'm running 20 pound fluorocarbon. The water's kind of dirty. So I, if I can get away with running 20, I will. And I have about two and a half feet of that leader. Now a little bit above my shrimp, I have a small split shot weight just to keep that bait suspended at a certain depth. And then I have a popping cork. So my setup is a Shimano Stratic 4000, 20 pound braid and a seven foot medium heavy rod. And we're just gonna cast along this grass edge and let the live shrimp do the work. Maybe we can pick up a redfish this way. So stay tuned, see if we can get something today. Fishing in high noon, but my bobber's already down. Pinfisher. Oh, I don't know. No, that got something. I think it's a catfish. I don't know what happened there. You heard the confusion in my voice just now. But we have something on already. And what is that? A catfish? Yep, hardhead catfish. We're just gonna unhook this one over the rail. we we won't count that as coming in the boat. See? Exactly. I meant to do that. <laughs> that worked out really good. I do not care for saltwater catfish that much. Freshwaters are awesome. They're good to eat. Saltwater catfish are on the verge of a nuisance. They are edible, and I do plan on doing a catch and cook with one this year, but not quite a hardhead. So, same thing. 
hook it where the horn meets the body. You may hook it somewhere else. That's just the way I do. It seems to work well. And let's get another cast out. So the good thing is where there's catfish, there's other fish. So it means there's a food source. They found my shrimp really quick too. There's a bite. Oh, there's a fish. It'd be nice if it wasn't a catfish. Not quite for sure what this one is. Doesn't feel like a cat. But then again, it could be. Looks like a little red. Hey, look at that. Beautiful little red fish. Check that out. Oh, you're going to get the screen all wet. Okay, well, this is my first red fish on the new boat. Here we go. He's going to grow into something big. Get that hook out and let him go. There you go, buddy. That's a hardy little fish. <laughs> Let's go do some riding around, maybe end up in another spot. If not, we're going to head back to the ramp and load her up. So that was fun, but uh, I'm gonna call it a day on fishing. This, like I said earlier, I don't know if I mentioned earlier in this video, I came out here mainly to show the boat, give it a ride, get more familiar with it because Lord knows I'm gonna be out in the Gulf of Mexico doing stuff, you know, especially with a little bit bigger boat. And I just wanna make sure I'm very familiar and my systems works. But we're gonna get ready to go dock and load up. So I'll see y'all at the ramp here in just a bit. Well, as you see, we've made it back to the ramp. So I shut the engine off. I'm gonna go grab my truck and get it back loaded up. It wasn't as easy as a scout, but I got it. I just gotta find that sweet spot. So it doesn't help that it's kind of an optical illusion on the ramp too. But let me get everything loaded up and pull it out of the water. All right, and one last thing, my safety chain. Never want to forget that. Can't see. There we go. <laughs> Got it on. All right, let's pull this joker out. Well, that wasn't too bad. I just got to practice. So that boat rides so nice in that choppy bay. Like today was a great test. And I wouldn't hesitate to take this out of Mobile Bay and do some fishing. That's the main reason I bought it, because I like to fish the open bay and I just needed something safer. So let me get the engine support on and lower that joker. And I get to take this home and clean it up. Sit down, awesome. <laughs> A lot of hard work went into this. I just had to get something that was bigger for the family. And I'll be running some part-time charters as well. So I just had to get something that was bigger. I loved the Scout, I still do. I hate to see it sail, but hopefully somebody will go and pick it up and have themselves a fine fishing machine. And if you've kept up with the channel, you know some good fish have been landed off that boat. And hopefully we can do the same with this joker. So I got some cool stuff coming up. Now let me go ahead and get off this ramp, this uh, <laughs> chaotic little area here. I'm, I'll be ready when they're done fixing it. At least we can still use it, that's cool. So, but I appreciate y'all for watching. If you like the new boat, go ahead, drop a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. We'll see you on the next Bama Saltwater Fishing video. Don't forget to check the website for updates on when charters will be available. Like I said, it's gonna be a part-time thing. So hopefully we can get on some fish. I wanna thank the good Lord up above for everything he does for us. We'll see you later.